Hi everyone. Today we want to talk about the interpretations for r, r squared, the slope, and the intercept. And so by now you have learned how to find these values. Now we want to talk about what do these mean and what do they mean in context of a problem. And so we want to use this example throughout the video. Here we have SAT scores and GPA at graduation. And so it has been said that you could predict a student's GPA based on his or her SAT score. And so what you should do is pause the video, get your calculator out. You're going to make two lists, one for SAT, one for GPA. And so why don't you do that now? Okay. What you want to do first is you want to, to, you want to determine what is your dependent variable, and so what is y, what is your independent variable, what is x. And so let's go back. Here we said we could predict GPA based on SAT. What that is telling you then is your dependent variable y is GPA, your independent variable, your x is SAT. It's very important that you know what is x and y first off. And so what we want to do next is we want to make a scatter plot and describe the shape of the scatter plot. And so why don't you take your calculator out as I go to mine and let's make the scatter plot. And so you should have had gone to stat, hit enter on edit, and so Here's GPA, there's SAT, I mean here's SAT, there's GPA. You ha should have these lists made. And so when you make the scatter plot, go to second y equal, hit enter. Make sure everything is set correctly. Hit zoom, nine. There's our scatter plot. And so let's take a look at this. There's three things you're looking for. One, is this linear or is this nonlinear? Well, take a look. There's no curves going on. It's going in a line here, and so this is definitely linear. Second, is this positive or is this negative direction? And so it's going up to the right, and so it's positive. Lastly, the strength. So is this weak, moderate, or is this strong? And so if you take a look, here we have a little gap, but these values are close to one another. If you made a line, if they would be kind of close to this line. And so I would say there's a moderate relationship going on. Again, eyesight is not what we want to rely on. When we talk about the strength, we can find the value ourselves. And so what we want to do next is we want to find the slope, the intercept, correlation coefficient in r squared. And so if you want to do this by hand, go right at it. I'm just going to let the calculator do the work for me. And so I recommend you do the same, but you can do this by hand if you really want to go at it. And so let's hit stat, go over to test. You want to go down and you want to find lin regression t test. Click enter. And so here's SAT, here's GPA, this is 1, we don't care, this is Y1, and so hit calculate. Again, who cares what's going up top? We want to go and find our intercept, here's our intercept, A equals 0.78. Here's our slope, here's B at 0.0023, here's our squared at 36, it's about 36 percent, and then there's R, there's 0 0.6. And so you should pause the video and you should write these values down. And so as you're writing these down, let's just go back to the screen here. And so again, just to recap, correlation coefficient R is 0 0.60, correlation squared correlation the coefficient squared correlation, R squared, is at 36%. The slope is at 0 0.0023. 
the intercept is at point 0.78. And so what we want to do is we want to write the regression line. It's very important that once you find these values, you write the regression line yourself. And so let's just do that here. And so again, the regression line is y hat is equal to a plus bx. And so y was GPA, so we're going to have GPA y hat equal to 0.78 plus 0 0.0023 parentheses SAT. And so what we want to talk about, what does this mean for our intercept? What does this mean for our slope? What does r and r square mean? All in context of this problem here. And so what we want to do is we want to start with the slope. And what I want to do is let's look at this in general. And so let's just look at this for a general case before we even talk about the regression. And so you should have taken algebra by now, equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. And so let's say we have y equals 2x plus 2. Your teacher should have taught you that you could make a table for x and y. So x, let's just have as 0, 1, 2. And so you plug in each value for x, you get your y. And so at 0, that's 2, 1 is 4, 2 is 6. And so let's just talk about this meaning here. Look at your x values right here. Here they increase by one unit. Take a look at your y. Here they're increasing by two. Guys, that's no accident that our y values are increasing by two and our slope is, in is also two. That's no accident there. What we can say in a general case is as x increases by one, our y values increases by 2. And so in this case here, each time x increases by 1, our y values increase by 2. We can use the same logic for regression. And so for regression, let's just go to our line GPA equal to 0.78 plus 0.0023 SAT. And so here our slope is at 0 0.0023. And so using the logic from the general case, we can say is as X or SAT increases by one, so by one unit, our predicted y, GPA, also is going to increase by 0 0.0023 units. And so what this is saying is each time we increase our SAT score by 1, our predicted GPA is also increasing by 0 0.0023. And so SAT, the GPA, that will change from problem to problem depending what X and Y is. This increases. This 0 0.0023 will also change each time you interpretate. The rest will stay the same. Take a look here. Here's increases. Here our slope is positive. When your slope is positive, your predicted y will increase. If your slope is negative, your predicted y will decrease. So pay attention to the sign for your slope. But what this is saying again is as x, the SAT increases by one unit. Our predicted GPA increases by 0 0.0023 units. And so that's 
what the slope is telling us. Next, we have the intercept. And so again, let's just look at this in a general case. And so let's go back to our line, y equals 2x plus 2. Let's go back to our little table, x and y, x is 0, 1, 2, y is 2, 4, and 6. And so when you're thinking about the intercept, think about what does it mean to be the intercept? What's the definition? Definition, when x is 0, that y value is your intercept. And so here, x is 0, y is 2, again, no accident that our intercept is 2 here. Whenever, what we can say in a general case for the intercept is when x equals 0, our y value is 2. And so, whenever x is 0, that y value is our intercept. We can use that same logic for a regression. And so let's just write our regression line one more time. And so using that same logic that we just now learned, what we can say is when x, the SAT score, is 0, our predicted y, GPA is going to be 0.78. And so what this is saying, if you had a zero on your SAT, your GPA is 0.78. And so anytime you're interpreting this intercept, what's highlighted is what's going to change on you. It's always going to be when x is 0, your predicted y is the intercept. What you want to check is sometimes when you have this interpretation, it's going to be useless. It's not going to make sense. But this is how you interpret the intercept for regression. And so what we want to take a look at next is the correlation coefficient r. Here r was 0.60. Recall that the correlation coefficient is always going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Closer to 0, the weaker the relationship. Closer to 1 or negative 1, the stronger the relationship. And so this is telling us two things for this relationship between SAT score and GPA. First, is this positive or negative? The slope is positive, <coughs> I mean the correlation, excuse me. The correlation coefficient is positive. And so the first thing is the relationship is positive. Second, how close is 0.6 to 0 and negative 1 or positive 1? It's pretty halfway through. And so this is about a moderate relationship. And so what you can say when you're interpreting this correlation coefficient is that there is a positive and moderate relationship between SAT and GPA. And so, anytime you're interpreting correlation coefficient, what's highlighted is going to change on you. And so, you pay attention, is this positive or negative? How close is this to zero or, or to minus one or positive one? Lastly, we have R squared. R squared is always going to be a percent. Here it's at 36%. And so R squared is always going to be talking about the vulnerability, the variance, the error, however you want to say it. Let's take it into account in the regression line for Y. And so when you interpretate R squared, you will start out as 
36% of the variance NY GPA is explained by small changes in X SAT. And so this is how you want to interpret R squared. It's always going to be the percent of the variance in your Y that is explained by small changes in X. And so, guys, this is how you want to interpret the slope, the intercept, r and r squared in context of the problem. What you should do is just go through this video and this example again and just work your way through this problem to see can you interpret these in context of the problem.